we only have to look in our own backyard. Here's Bruce. There's Bruce. It's a bit of a famous picture. Bruce is in the room. I think Bruce. Does Bruce look like he's driving to the fire? <laughs> the matter is, do you reckon even Bruce, if he tried to turn around in his truck, and there's another truck behind him, do you reckon he would even be able to put out the fire if he went there? <laughs> to me, that, that picture there says it all. The fact is, do your own maths, people. Do your own maths. We don't have enough trucks to go to every house. The traditional response model, the one that we've told our community for a hundred years that is going to come and save your life, does not stack up anymore. Can I tell you, when I first joined the job, back in, well, a couple of years ago, we don't need to go to that level of detail. The reality was I was not allowed, it was against CFA policy to tell people that they weren't going to get a fire truck to their house. We knew they weren't going to get a fire truck. Why do you think we did that? Absolutely. Keep the illusion was the point made here, is because we needed to make, we, we wanted to make the, the, the community feel safer. We wanted to, we didn't want them to know that they weren't getting a fire truck. Dawn led a community fire guard group in King Lake, and actually, every house in that particular street was saved. Not one person in her community fire guard group died. So, do you see her wearing any medals? Do you see her getting any accolades? Do you see her in the, in the Herald Sun? Do you see her on Channel 7, Channel 9, any of the main media? No. No record, just a quiet achiever. Save more lives. There's probably at least a hundred dawns in this room that, that you people have the power to, to make that change that we cannot do with the provision of a fire truck. The interesting thing for those that were here last year, there's a guy here called David Chalk, I think his name was, yeah. David Chalk. And David Chalk said, you know who the community to relate to most? It's not the shiny bums out of headquarters. It's not the bloody buffins, buff heads in suits or the, the school teachers that we may employ under a volunteer, under the uh, Fire Ready Victoria campaign. It's actually the local person and the local community that they will listen to. And this is Terry asking me to say it. I didn't want to say it, Terry. It wasn't part of their journey. This is why we, we created the caftan wearing community safety department and the knuckle dragging uh, fire hose people. I was going to mention Terry, but Terry did ask me to say that. We created the two departments in our organisation because we recognise what well, we need to get in contact with our community. But our firefighters can't do it because they are just knuckle dragging. They were not going to connect with their community. They're environmental vandals. They are just no good at all. They're only good for putting wet stuff on red stuff. Uh. Wrong, wrong CFA, we need to change that around. We recognise now the power is we've got to have our, our, engage, our brigades engaged in the community, giving both suppression and prevention a community message and empowering. We need you. I want everybody in the, I thought about actually handing out a, a baton and said, I want everybody to take this baton. And when you leave here, you take the baton and you you're, you're then charged with the responsibility of, of actually um, empowering your community or getting your brigade on board. I said to the, uh, the CEO there at the start, interesting, we have 65,000 volunteers. We know about 20, maybe 30,000 are operational. Most of those people are also, a lot of those are community practitioners and gauges. What are the other 40,000 doing? I put to you, we've probably got equally as many people that are only interested in giving a community message. And again, like Dawn, has the potential of saving more lives than any people will in a fire truck. Interesting, isn't it? The movement continues. It continues to grow. It is getting bigger. The people are starting to recognise it around the, the world. But are we there yet? Are we there? I put to you, does every home have a working smoke alarm? This is not just bushfire. This is not just natural events. Does every, is everyone that is vulnerable to bushfire prepared to act safely under threat? Will they make an informed decision? Or do we still have people that are sitting watching their telly on a hot day with the curtains down, watching the cricket with the air conditioner going, and don't know there's a bloody fire until someone puts it across the bottom of the stream? We've got a lot of work to do to make Victorians and indeed South East Australians, but a couple of the New South Wales people here, so I'm making it a little broader, to make people safe.